Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given a tree where each node is labeled with a lowercase character. This labeling is given in a string where the index corresponds to the node ID. For example, character A is there at index 0 and 2. So nodes 0 and 2 are labeled as A. Similarly, nodes 4 and 6 are labeled as D. We are also given that node 0 is the root of this tree and we have to find for each node how many nodes in its subtree including itself are labeled with the same character. For example, node 0 is labeled as A and we have two nodes in its subtree including itself that are labeled with A. Similarly, when we look at this node, this is the only node in its subtree that is labeled with B. And if we repeat the same process for each and every node, this will be the answer. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's just try to come up with a solution that works using this example and later we'll try to optimize it. When we look at this node, these will be the nodes in its subtree which are labeled the same. So the result for this node will be 3. Similarly, when we look at this node, there are two nodes in its subtree with the same label, hence the result for this would be 2. Let's see how we can find the result for this node. Since the subtree of each node will include itself, there will be at least one node with the same label. For finding other nodes in the subtree with the same label, we have to find all the nodes in the child subtrees who have the same label. We can do the same thing recursively for the subsequent child nodes and then we can count all the occurrences of the label A. Both these subtrees have one occurrence of A, so the result will be 3 for this node. We can do the same thing for each and every node, where we will start from that node and check all the nodes in their subtrees to find the same label. For example, when we try to calculate the result for this node, we will calculate the occurrence of C in both of these child subtrees and then add it to 1 to get our answer. The time complexity of this would be O of n square because we have to start from each node and then check all the nodes in its subtrees to find the same label. Let's see if we can cut down some repetitive work. Let's again look at this node and let's try to count for which all characters it should keep a track of their counts in its subtree. Since it is labeled as C, its result would depend upon its count. So definitely the count of C must be tracked. But if we look at its parent, we know that its result would depend upon the count of A. So somehow if we were also able to track the count of A at the same time, this would cut down some repetitive work. Similarly, if we were able to track the count of both B and A for this node, both these values could be used by the parent to calculate its result. So for each individual node, if we also keep track of their parent's label, we'll cut down on some repetitive work. In fact, if we can keep track of the count for each label, for each of its ancestor, there will be no repetitive work required. But the problem is, how do we know which are the labels for its ancestors? They can be any one of the 26 lowercase characters. Since these are only 26 lowercase characters, why don't we keep a track for each of them? So for each node, we'll count the occurrence of each character in its subtree and this value will be passed up to the parent to help it calculate its result and so on. Let's see this in action. We'll first start with all the nodes in the bottom row. They don't have any subtrees, so we'll just count their own labels and also store their result. Now let's look at these nodes. We'll add 1 to the count of their labels, to the count coming from their child nodes and we'll also update their results. Similarly, these values will be used by their parent nodes to calculate their results. And finally, we'll reach the root of this tree with the count of all the labels in the tree. We'll calculate its result and then return the result array. This logic can be implemented recursively where we start at the top and then for each of its child nodes, we call the same recursive function. We have to implement this recursive logic using a depth first search. The time complexity of this would be we have to go through each node in the tree and then for each of the 26 characters, we have to update their counts. So it will be O of 26n. And the space complexity would be O of 26n because we have to store the count of each of the 26 characters for every node. Let's implement our solution. The first thing that we'll do is store our graph in an adjacency matrix. So we'll go through each edge. And since this graph has no direction, we'll store two entries in our adjacency matrix. 
now we'll define our result array to be zero for each of the nodes now let's implement our dfs function which takes the current node and the previous node as input parameters we'll first define a counter to count the occurrence of each character we'll have to set the count of the current label to be one our current label will be the character at the index value equal to the current node value in the label string we'll set this value to be one now we'll go through each of the child nodes for our current node since the previous node will be one of the neighbors we'll skip it when we encounter it this will avoid a cycle now we'll call our dfs function for each of the child nodes to get the occurrence of each character in their subtrees and we'll add these values to our hash map for our dfs call the child node will become the current node and our current node will become the previous node please note that we are able to add these hash maps directly because we have used the inbuilt counter data type that supports this if we had used a hash map in its place then we would have to go through all the 26 characters and add them manually finally we'll store the result for this node it will be the count of our current label in the current subtree and finally we'll return our counter hash map we are now done with our dfs function let's call it for the root node 0 with the previous node as none and finally we can return our result array let's submit our solution you can see that our solution is accepted if you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution please mention in the comments if this video was helpful please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content thanks for watching